Welcome, everyone. Good evening. It's very good to see all of you here this evening. And for everyone who's joining us on Facebook, I hope this time around God's Word will be a time to bring peace and to bring uh, settling to your day, however it has been, uh, whether it's been good or bad. Being around God's house and around God's Word is a great way to end the day and to bring peace, peace to our evening. Today we uh, continue with our midweek services. We come to Joseph, the son of Jesus, the son of Joseph. This actually isn't the last service in our little series because Christmas Day will finish up with Jesus, the son of Mary. So today we talk about uh, Jesus, the son of Joseph, and uh, how God takes care of the forgettable people in the world. Because Joseph is really a minor character for all that we say about him. It's really kind of a minor character in the whole Christmas story. <clears throat> so just as a reminder, tomorrow, Christmas Eve, we'll have a service at 3 o'clock for folks who don't want to get out at night. We'll have a service at 7 o'clock. We'll have a service at uh, 11 o'clock. We'll have candlelight at all three services. And uh, even at the 3 o'clock service, even though it'll be sunshine. Uh, but we'll have candlelight and all three services will be the same. The 7 o'clock service will be on Facebook. So we'll continue with the bulletin that is here. Uh, our service is on the bulletin for today. You should have received it as an email if you're watching at home. Will you please stand? Let us begin. <coughs> Jeremiah recorded the Lord's promise. I will make a new covenant. Paul reminds his readers, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. The angel told Joseph, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. First reading comes from Jeremiah, 31st verse. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. O Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Second reading is from the first chap from First Corinthians, the first chapter. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of were, were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. 
But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. The third reading is from Matthew chapter 1, beginning the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The days are coming when I will make a new covenant. God chose what is low and despised in the world. You shall call his name Jesus. May the grace and may the mercy and may the peace of our good God and Savior Jesus be with you now and all the days of your life. At the end of Matthew's genealogy, it says, And Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. During the 2008 presidential election, fame came to a man. Uh, his name was uh, Joseph Wurtelbacher, and uh, he became quite famous for a little while. Uh, he was also known as Joe the Plumber, and uh, Joe the Plumber became kind of an icon and a stand-in for all the common people in the country. He was quoted in stump speeches, and he was referenced in debates, and he became very famous. That's a plumber from Ohio. The uh, candidates used him as an example to try to appeal to the average Joe. Uh, 
for a brief moment, this simple plumber from Ohio became very famous, a household name even. But then he just slipped back into obscurity after the election. People don't even remember him anymore. See, every family tree has people who have been forgotten over time. I um, mean, their existence just seems to be a, a name and a line in census data. No statutes, no, no statues, no memorials, nothing to commemorate them. No great deeds that they did that stand out uh, in history. I mean, and after about three or four generations, nobody really remembers them anymore. They just kind of pass into history until somebody down the line decides to do genealogy, starts digging in the family records, putting the trees together, making the branches, and then the name comes up one more time. I mean, for people who do their family genealogy, it's like that. Just big computer files full of uh, names with a beginning date, a line, an end date. And it's not, like, not unlike what Matthew gives us tonight, because Matthew has constructed the whole family tree of Jesus with the good, the bad, the infamous, and the not so famous. And one of the last names in that family tree of Jesus is Joseph. Now Mary is the key figure in the life of Jesus. Mary figures prominently in the ministry of Jesus all through the Gospels. Joseph, barely remembered actually. I mean, he's the, he's the actual, the ultimate average Joe. Um, See, his stature really fades in comparison to his, uh, to his betrothed. Mark doesn't mention Joseph at all. Neither does John. Uh, and Matthew and Luke only mention Joseph in the birth announcement, except for Luke mentions the boy Jesus at 12 years old in the temple. And we, we do that on January 3rd, by the way. But other than that, Joseph isn't really mentioned. After the age of 12, Jesus interacts with his mother and his brothers all the time, but Joseph is, is MIA. You just don't see him. Jesus is called the son of David. Fifteen times in the Gospels, he's called the son of David. I mean, blind men, those who needed healing, would cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And that's com commonly how he was known. When Jesus was being crucified, the Roman centurion said, surely this man is the son of God. Matter of fact, 30 times he's called the Son of God by Jews, by Gentiles, by the clean, by the unclean, by the needy, by the strong, and even by demons. They call him the Son of God. And Jesus liked to call himself the Son of Man. That's how he referred to himself. Almost 80 times he refers to himself as the Son of Man. But how many times is he referred to as Joseph's son? Jesus, the son of Joseph? Four times four times in the whole of scriptures. And even when Luke talks about Jesus, he, he puts it this way. He refers to Jesus as the son, as was supposed, of Joseph. See, Joseph is like many people in the family trees. He's the kind of relative who's not exactly a relative, but he's kind of remembered in someone's family Bible. He's just kind of a, a note there scrawled in the margin. And... Um, Nobody really remembers him too much. Joseph is that extra figure in the nativity sets. You know, he's not a shepherd, and he's not a wise man. He's kind of balancing out Mary and Jesus and that other person on the side there, and just to balance things out. Uh, I mean, how many times, how many pictures have you seen Madonna and child? And then how many pictures Joseph and Jesus? See, to many people, Joseph is really quite a forgettable figure. However, Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus, it's much, much different than Luke's account from the birth of Jesus. Um, you know, in Matthew's account, there are no shepherds, there are no wise men, there's only one angel, there's no innkeeper, there's, there's no stable, no manger, no arduous journey to Bethlehem, no donkey in uh, Matthew's account. As a matter of fact, Matthew basically tells the story from Joseph's point of view and follows it from his way, his perspective. Now, during Mary and Joseph's day, a, a betrothal usually lasted a year. It was a serious commitment. It could only be broken by death or divorce.
but you didn't have sex, or actually you weren't supposed to. Um, didn't always work out that way, but that was the idea. You didn't have uh, relations until the marriage ceremony itself. Matthew, or excuse me, Joseph was a righteous man. When he found out that his bride-to-be was pregnant and he knew he wasn't the father, he had a choice. I mean, according to Old Testament law, he could have had her drug out in the, in the town square and stoned to death by the villages, by the villagers himself throwing the first stone. But he didn't want that for Mary. He didn't want the shame on himself publicly, and he certainly didn't want that for her. So he decided to dissolve the marriage as quietly as possible, and everybody just kind of goes their own way and moves on. And when we see Joseph's plan, we can understand why God, in his infinite mercy, picked this man to be the stepfather of Jesus. Because he was a compassionate man, trying to do God's will the best he could. I mean, he didn't lash out at Mary in anger or vengeance or anything else. He tried to show her mercy and compassion while still being faithful to God and still turning away from sin. He tried to find that, that delicate route to go. But then the angel, again, but, wonderful word in the Bible, one of the best words in the Bible. But then the angel appeared to, Jesus, to Joseph and told him that the child of Mary was not the result of sin, but it was the result of God's grace. That the child was a product of his grace, and not anyone's sin, and told him to name the child Jesus because he would save his people from his sin, from their sins. See, in the Old Testament, whenever somebody was named, it was usually a testament about God's character, you know, what he was like, how he was compassionate or strong or would save people. And many times people were named Jesus or Joshua because it means he saves. And the idea was to look forward to God's redemption. But in this case, it was not a symbolic name looking at God's character, like um, that God would save them through the passing through the Red Sea, or God would save them by um, delivering them out of Egypt. Um, rather, this child is the ultimate embodiment of God's mission to save you and I from our sins to save us, not just from oppression and suffering. He had come to be the Savior, to be the Messiah, to be the Christ, to be the Anointed One. He is the one who would rescue and redeem God's people from death. I mean, this child of Mary was no ordinary child, but unlike any child ever born before or since, because he came to save his people, including Joseph and Mary. And Joseph, when the angel comes to him, no words. As a matter of fact, there are no words from Joseph anywhere in the entire scriptures. The angel comes, and Joseph did what the angel commanded. He took Mary to be his wife, took care of her. When she gave birth to a son, um, he named him Jesus. Um, he sure wasn't ever the kind of thing Joseph expected to, to hear. It wasn't what he had planned, but God had other plans for him. God had a plan, and the angel revealed that the perfect plan of salvation, he revealed it to Joseph, and Joseph believed it. See, Matthew does not tell us how Joseph felt about all of this. He didn't tell us what Joseph thought about any of this. Uh, he didn't tell us how Joseph tried to figure it out or all make it make sense or how it all added up. Matthew simply states that Joseph did what the angel commanded him. Joseph did what he was told to do which is a increasingly rare quality even in this day. He took Mary home, made, him, made her his wife. When the child was born, named him Jesus, just as the angel had directed, with the promise that this child, of all the children, this child would save his people from their sins. Now the angel would appear to Joseph two more times, by the way, the first was to uh, warn Joseph that uh, Herod's soldiers were on their way and to take the family to Egypt to protect his adopted son from the murderous King Herod. And then after Herod's death, then after Herod's death, uh, Joseph was told by the angel, again in a dream, to return to Israel and to once again 
settled there. They settled in Nazareth. No objections, no debate, no recorded words at all, simply did what he was commanded to do. But that is what we remember about Joseph. He did what needed to be done. He took care of the details. He did what needed to be done. I'm sure many of you have felt like Joseph. You have probably felt forgotten by people, probably felt that you haven't gotten the recognition you deserve. You don't want to be an average Joe. You want to be remembered. You want to be someone who leaves a mark on society. But the marks we ultimately leave on those around us really are the stain of sin. The only hope we have is not that we'll be remembered by the people around us, but that we'll be remembered by God in his infinite mercy so that he does not remember our sins and our failures. See, we can find comfort and peace knowing that God has claimed us as his own in the waters of holy baptism, that he has sealed us with his Holy Spirit as a deposit and a guarantee of God's promise to remember us in his kingdom. See, Joseph's earthly father, average Joseph, he had some in common with all the other names in the family tree, even those much more famous and all those much more renowned. Joseph was a sinner who needed a savior. When he gave the child the name Jesus, it was because Joseph, too, needed someone who would save him from his sins. God would then use this average Joseph to protect Jesus from Herod's soldiers who ran their spears through the baby boys all around Bethlehem. But one day, Joseph's adopted son would allow himself to be run through by spears and thorns and nails. And the son of Joseph did it for his earthly father and for all of us who are part of the family of faith, you and me included. See, basically, Joseph's son came to save his average, forgettable, common, everyday people from their sins. God does not forget the average people among us. He even remembers those everybody else forgets. See, Joseph serves as a silent and yet a faithful witness to the church of all ages about God's all-encompassing grace reaching to the greatest, reaching to the least. His all-encompassing grace is what Joseph tells us, that even the average Josephs aren't forgotten by the amazing God we have. In the days ahead, as, as things continue to change, may God strengthen us, and may we be comforted both tonight and in the days to come, knowing that God not only remembers us and knows us, but that he thought enough about us to send his son, Jesus, to save us from our sins, you and me, everyone else in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this point, we would normally receive our offering, but as with so many things this day and this season, we're not passing the piece or passing the plate. But the offering box is in the back there for those of you who brought an offering. Thank you for those who continue to mail in your offerings or give on the Give Lippy app or con and continue to support the ministry here at Apostles Lutheran Church. Will you please stand and let's pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, guide and protect clergy and lay leaders of your church. Enable them to lift people's hearts and minds to look beyond global pandemics and natural disasters, beyond political upheavals, to see the eternal kingdom, which you have graciously opened to all people who trust in you for life and health and peace. Bless those who till the soil, who manage farms, transport supplies, and distribute food and clothing where they are needed. Son of David, Almighty Lord, give wisdom and courage to those who lead governments, 
who command armed forces and maintain order in society. Give them hearts to seek peace so that warfare with neighbor states and civil strife within them give way to prosperity, health, and cooperation. Increase our faith and depend to depend on your eternal promises of the better country that awaits us by grace. Son of Abraham, Jesus, light of the world, open the hearts of all who are burdened by their scandals and other past sins. Surround them with faithful people to tell them about your coming in human history to give yourself for them. Protect and guide all law enforcement personnel, first responders, healthcare workers, and counselors. Help them balance justice, mercy, and compassionate care so that many may have their lives repaired and hope restored. Son of scandal. Gracious Lord, cared for by your adopted human father, Joseph. Remember people like him, those who have been forgotten, whether they are dispossessed, incarcerated, or isolated for any reason. Remember not their sins and iniquities, but give them a sense of your abiding presence. Nurture in us all a love for your will so that we obediently do whatever you ask. Son of Joseph, hear our prayer. Servant Savior, born in a stable to a lowly virgin, remind us again that you turn the world's ways upside down. Give strength to the weak, lift up the downtrodden, provide hope for the despairing, announce peace to the distraught, and proclaim eternal forgiveness to all burdened by their sin. Son of Mary, Lord Jesus, when you came to save all mankind, you graciously used lowly, imperfect people in your human family. Use us now, we pray, to spread the news of your holy birth, sacrificial death, and glorious resurrection. Son of Joseph, stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might. The sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be Now may the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you.
Christmas Advent observance draws to a close, we hope, I hope that you've been blessed by our time together. You have been greatly blessed by God. He has not forgotten you, no matter what you're dealing with. Hopefully, you have a peaceful journey to your home, and being with God's Word tonight, it will give you a peaceful night's rest and sleep. Tomorrow we meet for worship at 3 and 7 and 11. On the 25th, we meet for worship at 10 a.m. to continue to thank and praise God. You've been greatly blessed. Be a blessing to those you see. This night, go in peace and serve the Lord.